In this video, we will talk about reference angles and building the new unit circle. Okay, so um, here we want to use the special triangles to find the following angles. So we've already done this before. So remember that the special triangle in this case will be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this is 45, 45. Okay, so we know that there's going to be x, x, and then x square root of 2. So if I was looking at sine of 45 degrees, we know that that's going to be the opposite over the, um, over the hypotenuse. That's going to give me x over x square root of 2, which is going to give me 1 over square root of 2. And if I rationalize it, it will be square root of 2 over 2. Okay, and I can also do the cosine, the cosine of 45 degrees. It's actually going to give me the same exact thing. 1 over square root of 2, which is square root of 2 over 2, okay? Now let's do it for sine of pi over 6. So remember, the pi over 6 in this case, um, if you were to convert that to degrees, uh, pi over 6 is going to be 30 degrees. So we're basically looking for the sine of 30 degrees. So remember, that's, that will require us to use the uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle. So here's 30, here's 60, okay? So... Um, if you think about this guy, um, you're going to have a 2 here, a 1 here, a square root of 3, and then x's. Okay? So if you were looking for the sine of pi over 6, remember pi over 6 is just 30 degrees. 30 degrees is going to be the opposite over the, um, over the uh, hypotenuse. That's going to give me x over 2x. That's going to give me 1 half. And then uh, the cosine of pi over 6, which is co basically the cosine of 30 degrees, uh, that's going to give me x square root of 3 over 2x. That's just going to give me square root of 3 over 2. Okay? So I forgot to circle these guys too. Okay. So using these uh, these um, these right uh, special triangles, we can figure out the 45, 45, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 30 degrees. We can figure out all of that. Um, so here the question is, what happens if the angle exceeds 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians? Because remember, pi over 2 radians was 90 degrees. Um, so uh, what can we do in that case? Well, one of the things that we can kind of do is, well, we can't use the triangles anymore because we know that triangles cannot exceed a certain amount of of degrees, then you won't have a triangle, okay? So what can we do instead? Well, one thing that we can do is we can use something called reference angles, okay? And one of the things that you kind of have to think about is that um, um, if you think about reference angles, uh, if you want to figure out uh, this angle alpha, so if you have something that looks like this, angle alpha, which clearly exceeds 90 degrees, well, you can kind of take a look at symmetry because you can kind of see that this point right here kind of corresponds to this point. So if you kind of look at this triangle, that's kind of the same thing as looking at this triangle. So even though this angle is not alpha, you can see that it's going to give you exactly the same sine and cosine, okay? Same thing with this guy over here. So this is for the sine because remember that sine was positive in the quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Here in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4, cosine is positive, and you can kind of do the same thing. You have this little triangle over here, and if you have an angle beta that exceeds 90 degrees, like really, really exceeds even more than 270, you can build another triangle, and you can see that this point right here is going to be almost the same as solving the one over here. So reference angles are basically what's left over, okay? So the leftover part. So reference angle is the acute angle T formed by the terminal side of the angle T and the horizontal axis. So for example, I get the if you're in quadrant one, your reference angle is gonna be the same angle, doesn't matter. Doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're in quadrant two, and let's say this is your entire angle that exceeds 90 degrees, then your reference angle is going to be the smaller angle right here. If you have an angle that exceeds up to quadrant three, okay, so maybe this whole thing, then your reference angle is going to be this smaller angle right here. 
okay? And if you have a angle that exceeds all the way to quadrant four, then your reference angle is gonna be this guy. So if you wanna think about reference angles, I always like thinking about them in terms of a bow. Okay, I can't draw, but. So basically, here are all your reference angles. Your reference angle in quadrant one, your reference angle in quadrant two, your reference angle in quadrant three, and your reference angle in quadrant four. So if you always think about the bow or the triangles hugging the x-axis, um, that's basically where your reference angles are going to be. It's never going to be on the y-axis, okay? Um, I also give you guys here kind of some examples on how to... How to um, find the the reference angles i don't memorize this i just i just look at them <laughs> i just try to figure it out okay so uh let's let's try to do this so here find the reference angles for 225 degrees 330 degrees and 3 pi over 2 radians so we're going to start off with 225 degrees so um if i think about what 225 degrees are um uh remember here's zero uh 90 uh, 180, 270, and then 360. So 225 um, is going to lie somewhere around here. So somewhere there. Okay, it's 225. So if you remember where it's going to be my reference angle. My reference angle is going to be right here. This is going to be my reference. So i got to figure out what that is. So how can I figure that out? Well, if I take 225 and I subtract 180, I'm gonna get that answer. So 225 minus 180 degrees. So 225 minus 180, that's gonna give me 45 degrees. So my reference angle is gonna be 45 degrees. So this so this guy is gonna form a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay, so I can figure out what this point is right there. Okay, now let's look at 330. So I do the same thing, 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. Um, 330 is right here. So if I think about where my reference angle is, my reference angle, remember, is always going to be hugging, hugging the x-axis. So it's going to be right there. So the way that you can do that is you can start off by 360 and subtract that 330. 360, subtract that 330, and you're going to get 30 degrees. Um, now, you're probably wondering, where are you getting this from? Well, I'm just getting this from here. So notice here I had this, this um, um, in, I, ha I was in quadrant 3, so I'm going to take the, the angle that I have, 225, and I'm going to subtract it from 180, to 180. And then here, this is in quadrant 4, so I'm looking at this case, so it's going to be 360 minus, minus 330. Okay? And then my last one is going to be 3 pi over 4. Okay, so if you remember, it's going to be 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. So 3 pi over 4 is basically 3 quarters of a pi. Okay, so 3 quarters, so this whole thing is 1 pi, so 3 quarters of a pi is going to be around here. Okay, so I'm looking at this angle. Okay, so my reference angle is actually going to be right here. There's my reference angle. So I'm going to take, uh, so when I'm in quadrant 2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, 180 and subtract that number. But in this case, we're in, in radians, so it's going to be pi minus 3 pi over 4. You're going to have pi minus 3 pi over 4, and you're going to get pi over 4. Okay, which is basically a 45, 45, 90 triangle, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and use reference angle to find the exact values of 150, of cosine of 150 and sine of 150. So don't use, um, don't use your calculator, okay? So let's start off by looking at where exactly 150 is at. So this is 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. So 150 um, is around here. Around there. There's 150. 150 degrees. Now we're looking for the reference angle. Okay. So let's try to figure it out. So it's in quadrant two. So we're going to take 180 minus 150. 
So we take 180 minus 150 and we're going to get 30 degrees. So that means my reference angle is going to be right here, 30 degrees. So this forms a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay. So that means I can try to figure out what this nut value is. Okay. So remember that if you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, okay, so here's 60 degrees, here's 30 degrees. Okay, so this is going to be the square root of 3x. This is going to be just 2x, and this is going to be an x. So here we're trying to, so this, so looking at this guy, this reference angle, the sine of 30 degrees, is going to lead me to find the sine of 150 degrees. Now, the one thing that you have to be very careful about here is that you're in quadrant two, okay? So remember in quadrant two, the sine is the only thing that's positive, okay? So let's take a look at this, okay? And you can kind of do it in this case. If you can see it in the x direction, here, this x direction, they're all negative signs. So actually this is a negative square root of three over two. Uh, uh, square root of 3x, okay? And this guy is a positive because this is um, the y values are all positive there. So here, the sine of 150 degrees is basically just taking the sine of 30 degrees here. So this is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So x over 2x, that's going to give me 1 half, okay? Now we're going to do it for cosine of 30, of 30 degrees. That's going to give me the cosine of 150 degrees. So in this case, it's going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, and that's going to give me a negative square root of 3x over 2x, which is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay. So as you can see, um, you can get uh, angles that are more than 90 degrees. Now, you can do this many different ways that you want to, but it's kind of tedious. So instead, what we do is someone has already done it for us. And this is what we call the magical unit circle. Make sure that you really know what this guy is. The unit circle is going to be super, super useful, especially if you take pre-calc. Um, so here what we have is basically, uh, let's look at the quadrant number one. In quadrant number one, uh, what we did is we have all of the degrees. And then aside from the degrees, we also have the radians. Okay, now within these radians, what we found is we found the cosine of, of 30 degrees, the sine of 30 degrees, and we got these values. So here's my x value and here's my y value. Okay, and then we use reference angles to try to figure out the other guys. Okay, so we try to figure out the quadrant two, what they were, okay, quadrant three and quadrant four. Okay, so we figured all of that out. I want you to really memorize this. I really want you to know them. Um, it's not that bad. Um, so you can see that all of these are by 30s. It's zero, then 30, then 60, then 90. Then you add 30 again and you get 120. You add 30 again, you get 150. You add 30 again, you get 180. And so far and so, and, and so forth. So you keep going and you, by adding 30 all around and you get that. Um, now, in order to get the other ones, in order to get the 45s, well, all you just do is you start with zero and then you add 45. That gives me 45. 45, you add 45, you get 90. Add 45, you get 135. Add 45, you get 180. And you keep adding 45 and you can see that you can fill out the middle points. Okay? For your radians, um, if you just choose to memorize these guys, that's fine. Pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. Okay? So we just memorize these. Notice that it goes 3, 4, 6. That's basically the pattern. Because if you go here, you see 3, 4, 6 okay, on the denominator. How do I memorize the top part? Well, remember that the top part is always going to be 1 less than the denominator. 1 less than denominator. So see how you have 3, you're going to subtract 1, you get 2, 4, subtract 1, 3, then 6, and 5, so Okay. These guys right here, if you think about it, 
is going to be one more one more than denominator and you can see that this kind of flips so now it starts six four three okay so now this is going to be a seven a five and a four okay now these are a little more tricky here what you're going to do in order to memorize these guys is that you're going to take the one that's across from it so this guy you're going to take these two numbers two and three and you're going to add them together you get a five this guy across from it, you're going to take these two numbers, 3 and 4, you're going to get a 7. Okay, and for this 11, same thing, add these numbers, 6 and 5, you get 11. Okay, um, the points, the way that you get the points, um, it's very simple. Notice that all of the points are divided by 2. If you look at all the points, except the quadrantal angles, all of them are divided by 2. The way that you can think about it is you can go 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3. So you can see that it's going 1, 2, 3, and then 3, 2, 1. Same thing here. 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. And you can apply a square root if you want to. On the bottom, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3. 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and then the signs are just really easy because here the signs, here all the x's are negative. Here all, all both of them are negative. Here only the y's are negative. Okay, and obviously we've been dealing with the quadrantal angles all this time, so these are really simple to just do. So what I would recommend is really make sure that you really know it. Even if it's an online class, you will eventually have to take a calculus class, I think. Make sure that you at least are familiar with this or try to construct it. There's a lot of YouTube videos that can help you uh, find these angles also. So just make sure that you really know them. So um, in, the next, um, in the next video, we'll do some examples of the unit circle and then we'll do the other trick functions.